course, there's only one problem with um, getting water into areas of your garden where there hasn't been a lot of water recently, and that's, of course, grass. Grass, 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 everywhere. This is what they call nut grass. I'm not even sure of the particular variety of it, but boy, it just <laughs> pops up immediately when you water something. And, uh, you know, we'll take care of this. We'll just come in here and weed out as much as we can. Uh, I'm not doing a very good job here. You gotta get, try to get all the roots off of there. Um, the goal here, of course, is to um, plant something in here that will um, crowd out this grass and cover it up. Uh, it does like quite a bit of sun, so if you can get something pretty dense in here, it'll actually crowd it out pretty well. Looking here in our raised bed, uh, not seeing any germination yet. Um, this again was where we planted the beans, the cauliflower, the carrots, and I keep thinking there's one other thing we planted here, but I'll be darned if I can remember what it is. But we'll keep watching for uh, anything to pop up here. And uh, it is getting plenty of water. You can see the soaker hose ran early this morning. And so you can see a relatively damp area, but it doesn't appear to be overly wet, which is really good. It's always a bit amazing to me how the sweet potatoes can just jump sometimes. Um, whether it's the sun and the heat or the fact they're getting more water or whatever, but they've leaped, oh, several inches at least in the last couple of days. Uh, as the vines start to spread out, we'll start to cover them up. I think that's what we learned with the last batch of sweet potatoes. So we'll keep them covered up and let them put out as many tubers as they can possibly do. It's always interesting to see the cycles in the garden. So here we can see the acanthus is starting to throw up new leaves at the base of the plant. And if I pull back here, you can see that there is the dried flower stalk from the previous set of acanthus flowers. I do love the way these look. And uh, again, it's always interesting to watch the cycles of things and notice how and when things change in the garden. Here's the day flower we uh, talked about planting in this garden bed a while ago, and you can see it's obviously taken off. It's throwing off new growth. This was just a small sprig when we first started, and uh, it looks like it's well on its way to spreading out and being able to cover the area. On the left here, you'll see a slightly bigger shoot that we put in, but it's also showing signs of throwing off new growth. Uh, cast iron plant that I thought was once dead uh, actually is uh, continuing on its growth cycle. It just needed more water I guess and so uh, this bunch here and there's another bunch a little further up have uh, reestablished themselves and continue to throw off new leaves and new growth so we'll uh, see how that continues. They should do really well when our rainy season comes here and they might expand even further. Now these three little pieces of green are actually an interesting experiment, something I'm probably going to do a little more of. We have one here, one here, and one here, and you'll see the soaker hose running here. Um, these are some seeds I gathered from the neighborhood from a tree. It's kind of a tree-like shrub, a little, uh, little up the street. I really like the plant. I really like the flowers it has on it. And so I gathered some seed that was dropping off it in, you know, cupfuls almost. Um, I figured I would test the viability of this seed simply by putting it in the ground here along the soaker hose. And darn if it hasn't shown itself to be quite, quite uh, viable. Uh, of the three or four I planted, actually it looks, I think there's another one right there. Looks like I planted four seeds. All four of them have germinated here. Now we'll probably end up moving uh, two of these out of this area. It would be a little overcrowded in here for all four of them. But um, once these get established, I'll probably actually um, maybe pot one or two of them up to give away as gifts and to uh, use as part of my ongoing tree project. This again shows how the concept of uh, gathering seed in your own neighborhood and cuttings from plants that you like can be a very effective way of expanding your garden. Um, this is a bigger success than I ever uh, thought possible, but it's good to know that at least in some ways in the garden I'm having a little bit of a success.
And we'll end this episode of In the Garden with a shot of our lovely gardenias. I wish you could smell these uh, with me here. Um, again, getting a little more water on this bed due to our automatic timers, our electronic timers, has helped this plant a lot. It's throwing off tons of blooms. What I actually do is I gather these up in sets of two or three and set them in a dish of water in the house, and they just perfume the entire inside of the house almost sometimes a little too much i have to watch they don't trigger my uh what little allergies i have but they do just smell wonderfully um and it's a great addition to any garden if you have one of these either outside in your garden or on a patio where you can just smell the wonderful scent that wafts off them each time you walk by so that's it for this episode of in the garden i hope you've enjoyed it for more information you can always visit the website douglas e welch Com. There you'll find links to a gardener's notebook as well as everything else that I do. If you're watching this on YouTube, please click that like button. It really truly helps, probably more than you might imagine. I want as many people as possible to view my videos and so every little click helps. Hope you'll forgive the background noise during this episode. Uh, they are tearing down a large building nearby uh, during the day and so Lots of bulldozers and cranes and everything else. Until next time, keep digging.